All right, we should be live. First, so check all of my things. It's a fun like 30 second delay every live stream in the beginning because I have I have to hear it myself. Even though I did test before this, I have to wait for it to come back and to hear it. Also, I'm pretty sure you guys have to sit through an ad first. So we'll all reconvene in about two minutes. <laughs> Alright. Let me get situated. Get my coffee, my mouse, my things. There we go. Should be all set. Hey, I'm here. So this is my second live stream today. I initially was like, hey, I'm gonna do some character work, which was this, and she looks ridiculously good. I freaking love this model. And then since then, I have gone to the barn. That's why I don't have cute hair anymore. You guys just get messy bun. This is where we're at, and I smell like horse, which is a nice way of saying dirt and bad. <laughs> um, and then I was just like, not tired at all. So I'm like, you know what? I'll do some busy work. Um, I'm, it's not going to be super interesting work compared to my normal, is in my opinion. Uh, it's just going to be post-processing and doing 3D print prep in ZBrush and then going into Mesh Mixer, which might be helpful for some of y'all. Who knows? But it's not as cool as her. <laughs> Ads, YouTube Premium. I don't know why I won't pay for that. I, I use YouTube enough for it to benefit me. I don't know. I just don't. It's hard to explain. All right. I think we should all be set. Let me get the right file open, even though she is fantastic. Oh, and I also did work on this one today too. The root structure and stuff. This one needs more love, but it's still pretty cool. It's still very cool. This giant sheet on the back of her head will be hair, I think. Again. It needs a lot of love still. We'll see. All right. I need to go to Days of Spooky. And my plan is just to post-process everything else that will be released. This has already been done. I think tomorrow is the giant spider. So I guess if you've been like super enjoying 31 Days of Spooky and you don't want to know what's coming up, then don't watch, I guess. <laughs> but if you did or you don't know what it is, um, I'm doing a project with Miguel Zavala where every other day one of us releases just a fun little piece of work. So let me, let me add my Patreon. There we go. So that's where all of them being posted. You'll also see Miguel's stuff too if you're looking for just like some fun stuff to 3D print. There we go. We had a spam bot. They've been removed. This is why I have the slow delay mode on. <laughs> All right. Perfect. So yeah, the spooky spider is what I'll be doing first for post-processing. And this process is usually pretty quick. First thing I'm doing is making sure that it is perfectly flat on the bottom. I might go a little bit more than that. I don't want to have to support the entire abdomen when I print this. So I want a decent amount of that to contact. I hope you guys have been good. Oh, I forgot to put on music for myself. I always do. And then I feel like it's weirdly quiet. There we go. I've been digging like this spooky lo-fi recently. It's been very nice. All right. All right, here is our spider friend. And then I will zoom in a bunch. 
kind of look at roughly how dense this mesh is. I'm currently at half a million points and let's see how low I can go. Um, I usually start around 150,000 and they'll keep going from there. Oh, that's a good question. Xander said not to be that guy, but to be that guy. Is that six or eight legs? I think I only did six. Is there supposed to be eight? You know, it's not one of those things I really, really did not pay attention to. I, I feel like eight would look feel like too many. You know what I mean? But I know spiders do legit have one or like. Damn it, Xander. That's a that's a legitimately good question. How do I not know how many legs spiders have? How many legs do spiders have? Google. Please just say six. Fuck, it's eight. Well, I am sure. Oh, because insects only have six legs. But then there's a couple of them. Spiders, scorpions, mites, ticks are considered pseudoscorp or arachnids, not just insects. That's ridiculous. Spiders, not just insects? What? <laughs> yeah, insects have six, spiders have eight. Well, Oh, hey, Natalie. Can't confirm. Spiders have eight. All right. We're, we're learning this all together, guys. And by we, I mean me. All right. This isn't that bad. We're also going to learn how to edit models. And I'm so glad I live streamed this. <laughs> and this is how we're going to fix that. That is so funny, though. Oh, my goodness. I would not have noticed that. Genuinely, would not have noticed that. I've definitely done a spider model with six legs and no one no one noticed anything. But they were really small, so it was a little harder to tell. <laughs> Natalie, as a former bug scientist, I can also confirm they're all bugs, though. Very, very informative. Thank you. <laughs> you know, usually I'm not too pressed about accuracy, you know, because I'm sculpting, like, I don't know, stuff that's not real, but... This is real. It, it's a spider. I, I can be, I can be bothered to at least put on two more legs. So yeah, what I'm doing here is I am just masking off these back legs. I'm going to duplicate them and I'm going to rearrange them. Not too bad. This is a good example where being that guy is perfect. It even looks better. Oh my God. I looked at this for so long and I even called in Ricky. I can blame him too. And I was like, doesn't this look under detailed to you? It was the legs. It was, it was the legs. Okay. Well, very cool. It still looks really cool. It, it does, but it's just, you know, it, it did not take long for me to fix it, and it objectively looks better immediately. Anyway, uh, see, Natalie says there are some scientists who tell you that there are only certain taxa that are true bugs, and those people are no fun at parties. I agree with you. You know, I'm not going to lie, I am that person sometimes, but um, that's okay. I don't go to many parties, so it's fine. <laughs> and then Miel mentioned thinking this is a giant tick could be a cool painting pattern. That could be cool and gross. So speaking of no fun at parties, but kind of interesting still, it's like the same way I was fascinated that like blue is a super uncommon color in nature. And I'm like, oh, my parakeet, which I wonder if you guys can hear him. He's singing back there. He's blue. I Googled that. I don't know why I'm like, my parakeet, is my parakeet blue? And sure enough, it was like, no, it's not a real blue, which makes sense. Every time he gets wet, he turns into this little like sad grayish colored like pile of feathers, which is very, very cool. So yeah, blue is rare, guys. I can't tell you how happy I am. This actually has the right amount of legs. And don't get me wrong. I'm the first person to be like, eh, it's fantasy. Who cares? But again, this, this isn't fantasy. It's a, it's a spider. This very much so exists. All right. We are going to adjust things a little bit on the bottom. So they kind of make sense. Again, good catch. I'm going to have to make Ricky re-render this. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll just say in the picture, like, they'll be like, is that like six legs? And I'll be like, no. And they'll download the model and then suddenly it's correct. It's fine. <laughs> oh, 
All right. We're back. As if nothing happened. Oh, you know what? It probably doesn't have all my poly paint now, though, huh? Okay, we're, I know how to fix this. I think. Oh, does he brush do a dumb? It does that sometimes. So what I did was I hit some of the legs and then I clicked. And so it was like, ah, your undo history is now gone. Let's see if quick save can save me. If not, it's not a hard fix. I mean, you guys just watch me do it. Bam, quick save to the rescue. We're fine. Emil says, let's see. Aren't ravens a really dark blue and not actually black? Um, maybe. I am not totally sure, actually. That is an interesting question, though. I don't think so. I think that's just more of like a painting thing. Like, you just very, very, very rarely use true blacks or true whites. I guess it depends on where you got the information from or like what context. All right, I can't help myself. We're Googling that too. Are ravens black or dark blue? Pretty sure they're black. Yeah, they mentioned like it can be sometimes appear like brownish in certain lights or blue, but no, they are. They're just black. It's like this iridescent shade. I think it has to do with the oil and their feathers. Also interesting though, so cool. All right, we're going to reopen this file because the way that I did this, got rid of my poly paint. And I'm going to have to take, do this render again because it is wrong. Not a big deal. It's not even like super complicated poly paint, but it's enough for I'm like, I, I know I'm not going to do it again. So let's just do this now. I wonder if the legs are separate right now. Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying very, very early weekend, I guess. I've stopped talking because last time I did this, I did a couple goofs and had to redo the poly paint. So this time I'm going to pay attention just for a moment. <laughs> I mean, arguably this will be the more interesting part of the live stream though, because after this, it's just going to be Decimating, post-processing, that kind of stuff. Which I guess can be interesting, but... Eh. I bet you I will never forget that spiders have eight legs now. Immediately in my head, I'm like, no, that's an octopus. <laughs> There we go. Excellent. All is well again. All right, we're gonna merge all these together. And in my normal fashion, I do create a folder for this. Actually, it's the only thing I use folder for. Now we have a copy of the colored version and then the post-process version. So if I just followed my normal procedure, I wouldn't have had to redo this. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I missed something you guys are talking about. Natalie says, in a D&D &D campaign a while back, my husband played a warlock with a raven familiar he named Lamar after his favorite football player. That's adorable. I painted the mini black with purple streaks. Very nice. Octopuses also have eight legs in me. Don't forget, two things can be true. No, it's impossible. Everything is mutually exclusive. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay, I actually had topics to talk about and I'm already forgetting. 
Um, Natalie, we were talking earlier. So Natalie is also Ella's Arcana. So if you want to see more cool art stuff, Google Ella's Arcana. She has lots of cool stuff. Um, but what she's mentioning today, like, just some days are just not like a super fast creative day. And it's true, like, I'll have to spend uh, on like a slow creative day. It'll take me like up to twice the amount of time to get the same amount of work done, which obviously is not ideal. It doesn't happen very often, but it's really frustrating when it does. I usually do two, one of two things. I either just call that day dead day and I just forfeit. I'm like, nope, I'm going to swap my days off. Today is now a day off because fighting this fight isn't worth it. Or I will take a small break and do something that will, why is that a separate piece? How weird. Um, I will do something that kind of like recharges me creatively. And that usually either involves watching a Studio Ghibli movie, which I don't do very often. I really should do that more. Or going on ArtStation or Pinterest and making a little collage board of art that I really like or something that's very similar to the project that I'm working on. And like 100% of the time that works. But again, I also take the day off sometimes. So if it is a meh enough day, that's what I do. Um, I mean, that's kind of within the thought of like the train of thought of burnout too. I find that the more concerned you are about burning out as a creative, the more often it happens. <laughs> I used to be so concerned about it and I'd really try my best to take tons of breaks and that kind of stuff. Also just for my wrist health and, and whatever. And uh, once I stopped worrying about it and I just only did work that I liked. So I started dropping commissions or just not accepting commissions from people that I knew were going to be a pain in the ass. Because at this point I can tell way before the commission even starts. So I'm like, I'll just say no to those. It's not worth the money. And my goodness, if only I had figured that out earlier. Um, that was a big part for me as well. Just stopping commissions that I didn't really like to do anyway. Um, that being said, in the beginning, when I was first learning how to uh, sculpt and do all this kind of stuff, I still wouldn't change it just because a lot of those commissions I didn't even like very much. I learned a ton and if I hadn't done them otherwise, I probably would feel more behind than I am. So I'm grateful to be where I'm at. Okay, why do you keep forming holes as I do this? What do you, what is the problem, ZBrush? There's no problem. Oh, there's a giant hole right there. Well, stop doing that. I always find it funny, like, the model ZBrush has a hard time doing these post-processing things for. It's never the ones that I predict. Like, I thought this one was going to be, like, super simple and stuff. No. It's 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 mad about something. I could probably decimate it farther and that make it easier, too. And Zax is here. Hello. Yeah, so I am doing this again. Zax was here earlier, too, briefly. Or the whole time. I'm not sure. He just chimed in at the end. Um, I'm just post-processing models, so it's not as exciting as earlier, but still fun. And Emil says, I can vouch for that. My plan was to get to a new level of painting and try to enter more competitions. Now I can't get myself to paint. I get you. I have a lot of projects that are just base coats. You know, it'd probably work for you too of like just making like a, again, I really recommend Pinterest and um, ArtStation. They're both fantastic. And just looking at stuff for inspiration, you know. Um, people have said it before, but like, Waiting for inspiration to come is not a thing. But that being said, you can once you get practice at it, you can easily get yourself to be excited about creating, if that makes sense. Also, if you're like me and somewhat mundane tasks really burn you out, be aware of that and save them for the end of the day or something. <laughs> what I mean by that is, um, Natalie mentions briefly earlier as well, Dealing with any sort of customer support j grinds my gears, guys. I really, really can't handle it. I am nice on the phone up until a point, and then I just, oh my god. So I have a Six Flags membership because I only live a few hours away. Super fun place to go. I enjoy it, right? Okay. Well, there was COVID. So during COVID, Six Flags was closed, and I just kept my membership because they were like, yeah, we'll just not charge you for the months that the park was closed. And I'm like, all right, sounds good. Well, it's a few years later, and I'm like, hey, you charged me every month through all of the pandemic, and, like, you said it was going to, like, kick it automatically. It didn't. And they were like, 
Yeah, that's true. And I also mentioned, I'm like, hey, also I noticed that my subscription price every month went up. No notice, no emails, no nothing. It wasn't a ton, but I think it was like 15%. And I was like, what is that about? And they were like, oh yeah, we did that too. And I'm like, you didn't send out emails? They were like, no, it's in the terms and conditions. We can change prices at will. I'm like, I understand that, but maybe you could tell me about it, whatever. And so I'm like, okay, so what do you want me to do? And they told me in order to get the months refunded to uh, cancel my account entirely, like delete my account and then it will automatically reset. And I was like, I just told her straight up on the phone. I'm like, that is not going to work. I'm just, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but there is no way in hell that is going to work. Okay. And she was like, yes, it is. I work here, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, fine. And I was like, Hey, this, the, the transcript of this conversation, I need you to write it to me in the email in some way or just what you had said. And they fought me on that. And I'm like, no, you have to email me what you said. <laughs> and sure enough, a month later, I, cause it takes a month to delete the account. It's a mess. It didn't work. And so I messaged them and I'm like, hey, it didn't work. And they were like, well, we wouldn't have told you to do that. And sure enough, I have to give them the evidence of themselves telling me what to do. I'm like, this is such a pain in the ass. At this point, I'm like, just take my money and run. I just don't even care. But um, those were good examples of days where I saved that for the end of the day. Because it put me in a foul mood. And it's really minor. It's really not a big deal. But like... When someone's telling me to do something that I know is not going to work and is just going to result in me having to deal with them later, oh, oh, it makes me so cranky, guys. So cranky. <laughs> um, I haven't actually double-checked my account to make sure everything is back to normal. I am too afraid to look, but I should do that. But see, I didn't. I specifically chose not to do that on a day where I was going to live stream and be pleasant and create things. Gotta be strategic when you were a sensitive brat like me. <laughs> Again, this is why I'm an artist and I work for myself. And uh, does not, I would be exceptionally bad at customer service jobs. And I can, I can tell you that for sure because I did them and I was bad at them. <laughs> oh, goodness. I can't tell me times I heard the customer was always right just to be like, no. They're not. But if you give me tools to make the angry customer go away, that would be great. It's like, no, your job is just to get yelled at by them. I'm like, this does not seem like a good system. Just saying. <laughs> uh. And then Emil says, I have to do a Lord of the Rings marathon to get more inspiration. Another fantastic idea. For me, it's Studio Ghibli. I just, there's something so whimsical about it. I just love it. And then Natalie said, sometimes looking at other people's beautiful art on days I'm not feeling just makes me feel more bummed out. Oh, that is sad. You know what? I, I think I remember feeling like that before too. And if you're feeling that way, that's like a subliminal thing I feel like. That means that you don't believe you will get to that level one day. If you have like small god complex like me, I always knew I was going to be awesome one day. I didn't know how long it was going to take. But I was like, if I keep doing this, I will get better. So maybe try to... I don't know, just, just get a little more overconfident and you won't feel that way. You'll be like, aha, I will be just like you eventually. <laughs> I wasn't concerned about the time frame. Then now I mentioned again, yeah, starting my day with being disrespected is the big dumb, which is what I did today. I mean, hey, to be fair, you probably weren't expecting to be disrespected because you're like, hey, it's their job to solve this simple mundane problem, not make it worse. Another thing I have a huge issue with is like people that work customer support jobs that don't talk like people literally if someone was like hey man i can't help you i know it sucks this is just the way that it is i'd be like all right sweet no problem <laughs> i know they can't be like hey man but like honestly why can't they because the the customer service tone and like the well i'm looking at my files and this is what i can do like i can't handle it i cannot handle it it just it makes me mean guys it makes me so mean I'm like, just talk to me like a human being, please. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I know working jobs like that really sucks. And I think they're doing that because uh, it makes the day go by faster. You know what I mean? Doesn't mean that I can't stand talking to them. What you going to do? Complain, I guess, if you're me. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know. I think it's fun to talk about. Natalie says, fun fact, the original saying was longer. The customer is always right in matters of taste. 
Oh, that honestly makes way more sense because that dictates like where the market is and where the value of the product is. That does make more sense. Emil says, Ghibli is great as well, but Lord of the Rings is a special place in my heart. Yeah, I think I got introduced to Lord of the Rings a little too late, I guess. I don't know. Like, I, I remember... I'm not even saying dislike it. I need to, like, properly sit down and watch all of it because I just remember watching one of the movies and Legolas was doing something ridiculous. I mean, I know it's fantasy, but, I mean, this man was, like, flying off of monsters with his bow. Like... It was just so ridiculous. I mean, he must have legs of steel to jump 30 feet in the air. I don't know. It took me right out of it. It was too high fancy even for me. I was like, this is dumb. But I feel like if I just could look at it through a slightly more childlike and appreciative view, I probably would have been like, this is really cool. Look at him go. But I'm like, I don't know who this elf man is. I mean, he's beautiful because he was early on the bloom. But uh, this is ridiculous. And I don't, it is not vibing with me. Again, there's too many good things about that world, though, that I, I need to watch it again. It's not even about, like, giving a second chance. I just I just know that it is better than the very small sample that I watched it for. Because, obviously, if I had a problem with things being realistic, high fantasy would be my favorite thing in the world. And it is. So, yeah, I was just having a cranky day that day, too. Who knows? <laughs> Elf physics are different from human physics. That's true. That's Peter Jackson. Is it? No, it's not. Who the hell is Peter Jackson? He has two first names. Someone should tell him. Or maybe I just said the name so wrong you didn't know what character I was talking about. Or you're making a joke and it's way over my head. Also going to Google Peter Jackson because I don't know who that is. Oh, this is not who we're talking about. Oh, you're probably, that's the director. Oh, that makes a lot more sense now. You're not saying that Peter Jackson played Legolas. <laughs> That'd be hilarious, though. All right, then. That was really, that was a fun Google journey for me. You guys got to witness on live stream. <laughs> and it's not mentioned, like, the director. I see you guys now, but I'm 20 seconds behind you guys. So by the time... Uh... <laughs> I think I'm funny. I'm still giggling over this. <laughs> I was so confident too. And you were not even correcting that. I think the only director name that I really know other than Steven Spielberg is, um, oh gosh, Michael Bay, Explosions Band, and Quentin Tarantino. And that is the extent of directors that I know. <laughs> Still funny. Still goofy. Would love to see Lord of the Rings with the director playing Legolas. <laughs> I mean, elves are the best. I mean, I feel like half of the models I've made are elves. Also, look at this horrifying, creepy doll that I did. How scary she is. Yeah, it's funny. For some reason, I didn't want to live stream this because Ricky mentioned I should live stream just again today. And I'm like, well, I already did that. And he was like, so? And I'm like, oh, right. And I was like, well, I feel like if they see that I have, excuse me, 31 days of spooky, like mostly done already, it takes the magic out of it. He was like, people know you work ahead. Stop being weird. And I was like, oh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's this very subtle assumption that the things that I release are the things I worked on that day, which is ridiculous and very not true. By the time I release a model to you guys, it's probably been done for at least a week. It's just the way of things. When I first got faster at sculpting too, it's partly why I didn't live stream more because I was concerned. If people saw that I could finish a model in a couple hours, then it would be worth less to them. I don't know. It's just assumptions like art brain makes. It's like, no one cares how long it takes me to make these. And if they do, they shouldn't. Look at how cool it looks. <laughs> she is nightmare fuel. Yes. 
Speaking of Michael Bay, the aesthetics of Armageddon are amazing. That's favorite movie said. I did not see that. I will need to see that. Also, something kind of cool that I don't normally do this. This is actually a reused model. And some of y'all have been around for a while. So, let me pull it up. What is creaking? That is creaking. All right. Uh, this model was originally released, I believe, for townsfolk, but it's been so long that I'm not sure. But the original model this is based on is much, much cuter. There we go. I accidentally went back and forth a little too quickly. I was trying to go back to OBS. But I did not. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. Oh, yeah. Obviously, Aliens is fantastic. Um, Why is this image, like, disappearing as I want it to exist? Y'all saw it, right? I'm going to have to, like, look at my own live stream to see if it ever even showed up on your guys' screen. Because it sure did on my side. That is so goofy. It's fighting me. Oh, yeah. It showed up on the screen. I can see. And then it just disappears. It just turned to black on my side. Whatever. Anyway, that's the model this is from. So I uh, took the bag, removed it, and uh, just really scrunched up her proportions to be really creepy. And back then, it was earlier sculpting, so I didn't define the faces very well. So it actually worked out. I feel like if this was like, a nicer defined face, this wouldn't have worked as well. Head cannon. They're actually the same girl. I love that. That's weird and creepy. Very nice. Good one. All right. I think I can decimate this a little bit more. Nah, her face is already really kind of scratchy looking, so. Hmm. I don't like that there's like a gap between her dress right there. There doesn't need to be. So let's just kind of squish that in and then I will merge the mesh once again. It is deforming her shoe a little bit, but I'm, I'm willing for that to happen. It's fine. There we go. And back to Remesh by Union, which is like my best friend. Oh, that was odd. Now she's a cone. What? Why, ZBrush? Why? Cool, undo fix that. I was like, um, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. God, when I was first learning ZBrush, it was so stressful because I was always a button click away from like ruining everything and sometimes permanently. Now I can generally fix the things that I accidentally caused, but there was a time where I was afraid to click on things and very afraid to use hotkeys because it was always, um, it was always a risk. I love mimics. This one came out so good. Bleh. Also stuck some eyeballs in the dirt just for fun. Not that guy is here. Hello. You're saying no to something and I'm assuming it's a creepy doll. Sorry, you're new here. I don't recognize your name, so that's probably a scary thing to, to start into. Unless you're disagreeing with the movie taste. Who knows? All right. Mimic tombstone. can probably do this at 150,000 points as well. The cone scared me. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. It scared me too. I think I just selected a new tool. If you go to the 3D gizmo, here we go. That's what I did. I clicked on cone 3D, which quite frankly, I find it to be a useless feature. If I wanted a cone, I'd go to append and click on cone. Whatever. ZBrush is trying to be helpful. Oh, 
It does not want to rematch by Union. But it should. Here, I will give you less points to deal with. How about that? Why will you not rematch by Union? Do you think something is masked? Yes, yes it did. See? I have done everything wrong at least once to where I can solve things pretty quickly now. Not to brag, but... And then not that guy says, I have lost my work several times when learning. Yeah, now I get you. That's cool that you also you also uh, play around ZBrush. Very cool. I think my favorite mistake that I made when I was learning was um, saving things as a document. Never in my life have I been able to save something in a program that was just a picture of the program. Unbelievable. I was so I was so frustrated. I mean, don't get me wrong. The model that I made was trash, but like I didn't think that at the time. I was very excited of my terrible blob alien, and now it's gone forever. Actually, I, I have a picture of it, I guess, but thanks, ZBrush. I wonder if people will still use ZBrush a lot, despite the whole, like, Maxon thing or whatever. I have the, um, perpetual license for it, so I don't get updates anymore without paying for it. But I also don't really care. Like, the last few updates that we got, I was like, I thought I was gonna care. I'm like, ooh, a different kind of brush or something. And I'm like, alright, whatever, like, if I want it, I'll just make it, you know what I mean? There's probably no reason not to have the teeth and the tongue touch right here. Because then you don't have to put a support there. Oh uh, no, it's farther than way than I thought. Never mind. We're not doing that. Alright. Mimic Toonstone. Wow, I spelled Mimic really wrong. Mim kick. You gotta write a name things. I just roughly name them. It's just enough to where in ZBrush I know what it is. And then I also have a spooky tree. And a mimic tree. Very happy with mimic tree. It looks very cool. I'm not sure if I already post-processed the other ones. I'll have to check later. Yeah, why is that even a feature? Yeah, and then Mihira mentions, that's what happens when you have software that was 2.5D, not 3D. Very true. ZBrush is in a matrix, that's how I got it. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I think the single thing that bothered me the most, though, with ZBrush is the fact that when you start off, it's not a sphere, you know? It's your stupid squares. And, like, I know, 2.5D, but, like, ZBrush started in, like, 1996. I'm pretty sure the same year I was born. I'm 25, in case you didn't know. Um, but, like, it's time to pivot, y'all. Like, you're a 3D software now. Not technically. But, but, yes, you know what it's used for. So, like, how about you design it around what it's used for? You know? Radical, I know. And Zaxa says, man, I love Mimic. Yeah, that's why I've uh, dedicated my entire... I, there's an entire spot on the vault that's just for Mimics. Because they're pretty cool. These are really good. I've seen quite a few. Oh, cool. Yeah, for the Mimic tree... Uh, so Miguel and I were making the list of what models to make, right? And I was like, I'll do Spooky Tree and then I'll do a Mimic of it. And in my head, that made sense. And then when I went to make this, I was like, what the... Like, where am I supposed to put a mouth? It ended up working out, but I was like... Why did I say I could do this? <laughs> do you have the non-mimic versions too? Yes, yes I do. And because you mentioned that, and because I want to... I need to take a break because my voice is getting scratchy. I might as well put them on the screen. Also, my lighting is trash right now, so let's fix that for y'all. You guys are so tolerant. I appreciate it. Alright, we have a mimic tree. And of course, the exact same tree, but not as mimicky. And then we have the tombstone. And then we have tombstone with a mouth. Well, bam. There we go. And I learned recently when you do screenshots, for some reason your lighting effects still move, which honestly was annoying because I was trying to use it, try different kinds of lightings and compare. And then when I found my screenshots were changing, I was like, oh, they update live? Cool, I guess. 
couldn't figure out if I was happy about the future. There we go. And I'm going to just throw this over there. Alrighty. Hear me out. Mimic creepy doll. What am I scratching? Sorry, I have a new chair, so like my, my little uh, armrest, I keep hitting my desk with it, and it makes a terrible scratching sound, at least on my side. Mimic creepy doll? I mean, my goodness. Just make like her entire head open up into a mouth, like a Muppet. Just like the whole thing. Yeah, I, I might do that. Or her stomach. I don't know. Something horrible. Awesome, that's the best. Because you can switch and surprise your players. I agree. I'm thinking of a Death Guard Plague Marine with a giant mouth in the abdomen. Oh, yeah. That's what I mentioned for the... I know what you're talking about. I've always loved tiny mimics, like lanterns or tea kettles. Oh, I, I did too. Because it's just like... Oh, this small mundane object could not possibly try to want to eat me, and then it does, and it's just fantastic. But Dead Tree on the left here is actually from my um, my spooky collection from 2019. But I just improved it a little bit. I added some more holes, and I stretched the proportions to be more interesting. It's supportless, too. One of my favorite D&D stories had a swarm of coin mimics. As in, like, each individual coin is a mimic because that's fantastic. That's so obnoxious. I love it. Like, the thought that each coin in a pile of treasure has its own, like, desires. You know, I guess the desire is just to eat the players, but, like, I'm still entertained by it. Like, what if some of the coins have, like, a preference for, like, noses? And so that's why it goes for their face. Like, I just... That would be hilarious. I found a cool mimic book from Loot. Oh, um, Loot, like, Loot Studios? Yeah, they're fantastic. They make really good stuff. I don't, I think I have a, a book. Yeah, a tome mimic. It's pretty cool. But I like my other ones better. Like, my outhouse mimics were my favorites. We're talking about mimics. Let me just pull up some other mimics I did. Then Marzi is here. Hello. These look so cool. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Might as well pull up more mimics, since that's what we're talking about. I don't have my own website bookmarked. I feel like that's ridiculous. Like, I own this. Alright. If you guys didn't know, this is the vault. It's the coolest thing ever. If you don't know what it is, you have to go look at it. I mean, you can only look at it if you are a patron. About it. This is where I store all my 3D models and stuff. Alright. I have a mimic section right here. Bam. So yeah, these are some other mimics that I've done. Oh, the loot was fun. I didn't like making the base loot. Um, I found that quite boring. The door came out surprisingly good. Um, it was a little tricky to make sure the back was thick enough to print well. That's the outhouse I was talking about that I'm really happy about. Someone requested the well. Oh yeah, there's the books. The well, and at first I was very much so not enthused, also came out great. And then obviously the snowman mimic might be my favorite of all time, just because the they look so different. I mean, I think I almost changed it a little too much, but I don't care. I love them. They're fantastic. But yeah, for anyone new here, like, I do this full time. I'm getting better with linking my thing in my own live stream. But this is why I can do this full time. People that support me on uh, on Patreon, which most of you guys already do, because you're great. But yeah, that's why I'm able to do this full time, and it's really cool. I'm also just really happy about the vault. Oh my goodness. Like these little graphics that move, very, very simple to make, but I'm still very, very proud of them. I think my favorite folder out of all of these is still Monstrosity. It's also, I'm gonna have to split this one up pretty soon here. It has more than like 50 pieces. Like it also has like, it has a cute ghost. It also has Brisella in it. I'm, I guess they're both monstrosity-ish, but like we're pushing what that category means. You know what I mean? Oh, I forgot about this model. The Null Lord was so much fun to make. Very spooky. Fantastic. Alright, I can look at my actual zebra stain again. It's darker, it's nicer on the eyes for me. Saxa says, I put it in the Patreon server stream chat. Thank 
you. And then Emil says, on a completely different note, I'd love to see a hermit crab with a skull instead of a shell. Yep, that's super cool. That's getting going into my notes. Speaking of, you guys are completely down to give suggestions at any point. I always have a little note just for my live streams in case people say cool stuff like that. Don't hold me to it. It might never happen. But if it did, you could take credit for it. Hermit crab, more or less. It had to be a fairly large crab for that to work, which makes it even spookier. I like it. But this has been fun. I'm actually getting a lot done, too. I need to do better with not telling myself no on things that don't even matter. Again, I almost didn't live stream today because... Well, the second time. Because I'm like, I've already done this today once. And this isn't that interesting of work. But here I am. I'm having fun. There's no reason to say no to that. <laughs> it's like if someone doesn't want to watch it, they just won't watch it twice in a day. It's not a big deal. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> For the longest time, I, I uh, didn't share my work in very many places either. Started sharing it a lot on Reddit now. Which, don't get me wrong, I still find a little bit nerve-wracking. I just, I don't know. There's something about it. There's something about putting their work, even if it's just free models, I just, I really don't want people to feel like I am, um, here's my free stuff, now give me money. You know what I mean? I'm very happy with the living that I make. I don't need more money. I just genuinely am happy to share free stuff. <laughs> anyway. And then Emil says, I really like the idea of an innocent crab who just happy to found out a good fitting home. He ended up looking really creepy. <laughs> oh God. That reminds me, what is it, in Frozen, where it's like, who's going to tell him? It's like, don't you dare. <laughs> Alright, let's get this one post process before I forget. Then Zaxa says, that reminds me of Monster Hunter. The Daimo, I think so? Hermitar wears a wyvern skull. Oh yeah, that's right. It's really fun talking about Monster Hunter, like audibly talking about it, because um, I, I don't know how to pronounce any of it. <laughs> I had a friend come over once, and it seems like everyone has their own way of pronouncing it, too. I know there's a correct way to pronounce these things, but um, yeah. Gosh, I have like a tickle in the back of my throat, and it's really not like, like I don't have to cough. I just... Maybe I'm just dehydrated. Oh, I should definitely flatten the bottom of this too. There we are. Oh, that did a slice. That did not do what I wanted it to. Let's try that again. Hmm. Why is ZBrush slicing this and not doing trim? That's really odd. Sometimes um, ZBrush gets confused on what brush it is, and it's usually because I clicked on something too fast. So I will save and watch. If I go to brushes and reset brushes, half the time it will crash ZBrush because it confused itself. Okay, it didn't crash, which is great. Now, how about trim rectangle works the way it's supposed to? That would be nice. I am, I am honestly baffled why it's doing that. Fine, I guess we'll use knife rectangle, which is pretty much the same thing. I have been doing this for so long, guys. Like, very, very long. I've never... This is a new problem. Whatever. Let's see. Daxa says, whoa, you play? Oh, a ton. I have played through Monster Hunter World many, 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 many times. Like, even the campaign. I don't even like... Like, the handler? I can't deal with it. Some people think, like, oh, she's cute. She's friendly. No, she's terrible. I don't understand why in Monster Hunter World... You're, you spent all this time making your palico as cute as you want him, right? You put all this time to, like, I like to, like, do his gear, even though he's not, like, super strong, necessarily. And, like, all the cutscenes, your palico runs to the handler, and you're just there. And I'm like, why doesn't my own cat love me? It honestly drove me insane. So I was a little happier, and Monster Hunter Rise, like, you also have your dog, your palamute, and it seems like the three of you get along okay. But, um, I, I've, 
is not my favorite. I want to play Monster Hunter. Which one should I go with? I would recommend World personally, but that's because I'm kind of a graphics snob and uh, Rise has really fantastic design. Oh, actually, it really depends what you're playing on. Obviously, if Switch is the only thing you have, Rise is your only option. Um, I have Rise on PC as well, but I really just think World looks better. The, um, I'm not going to lie, the the maps are really confusing in Monster Hunter World. Like, the freaking ancient forest, I still don't know how to get around. Like, genuinely do not know how to get around. But I don't know, I think I just liked it a little bit more, and a lot of people didn't like Iceborne, but I did. See? Why did Trim Rectangle work on this tree, but not on the other one? Gosh, this is a new thing. There's something that I am doing. Why is it working now? Whatever, guys. Ah, graphics. Yeah. So I played Rise on Switch, because that's what it came out on first. And then when Monster Hunter Rise came out on PC, I'm not going to lie, I was pissed. I bought it on Switch, because I was very confident it, that was my only option. I would have just waited for it to come out on um, PC. I used to not care about graphics and FPS and all of that kind of stuff. I, I honestly could barely tell the difference between 30 and 60 FPS. But after playing more competitive games like Overwatch, now I can see it. And now I cannot unsee it. And it's, it's frustrating. That being said, I'm not too much of a graphics snob. I, I replayed Dragon Age Origins not that long ago. And maybe it's the nostalgia carrying it for me. But um, I love the shit out of that game. I could talk about Dragon Age all day. I have a PC, Xbox Series S, and I'm thinking of getting a Switch. Yeah, um, the Series S, I really like how as well. The Switch, I've recently kind of fallen out of love with my Switch, so maybe I'm not a great one to talk about that. I played it for like Animal Crossing, for the new mainline Pokemon games, but again, I'm getting kind of tired of the new Pokemon games as well. I just, I just, so I played Pokemon Arceus, and I just don't understand why some areas couldn't have the nice like Breath of the Wild grass everywhere. It's just, completely open and at the end of Pokemon Arceus is this icy region and um it looks terrible <laughs> like it looks so bad <laughs> it was very frustrating I'm like this is the end of the game that I've worked so hard for to get here and I don't even want to spend time here it was just silly the Monster Hunter world graphics are amazing but very badly optimized this is true um, if you go for it you'll need a pretty good rig yes I should have specified that I have spent a lot on my computer so Maybe, maybe don't do that then. Unless you have a, a nice rig. Dual Blades Gang. I love it. I, uh, almost strictly Insect Glaive, but in Rise, I didn't like it as much. So, in Rise, I did a playthrough with, um, I say a playthrough. I haven't gone through Master Rank still. And I've barely touched the DLC. Don't remind me. I need to get to it. Anyway. Let me check my thing really quick. Just making sure I haven't missed any of the models I'm supposed to be working in post-processing. You guys brought up games that I like, and now I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> Excuse me. Again, I still have this itch in the back of my throat. <laughs> I need to drink some more coffee. But yeah, when I'm not making models, and I'm not out with my horse, I am pretty much playing video games exclusively. Not as of recently, I've actually tried to see what my days would look like if I didn't spend so much time playing games. So, it's like a two-day experiment. And then Xander said, Switch is gimmick games. I kind of agree that's what it's for at this point. I used to really, really like it. Um, but it's been kind of bothering me that the hardware still hasn't upgraded. I keep thinking a new Switch doesn't come out, and they just don't. Um, it just needs to be a little more powerful. I do really like Switch games for our Switch for any visual novels. That's pretty that's fantastic, obviously. And then Emil says, I really like getting comfortable in bed and playing, but laying in bed with glasses isn't the best. So therefore a Switch. Yeah, I could see that. I also, I mean, I would just make the couch really comfortable and just curl up in a blanket and it's it's, it's not the same as bed, you know? And yeah, another aerial buddy. Yes. <laughs> No, I love Insect Glaive just because uh, I like weapon sets where I then have to like multitask, I guess you could say. And so with Insect Glaive, it's so much fun to always be collecting all three buffs. And then um, 
getting all my clouds of dust just right to explode at the right moment and inflict ailments. I usually end up by the end of the game just doing blast because blast is super overpowered, I feel like. But every now and then I'll do like a specific poison run or something. That's really fun. And then Xander says, at least Switch has games unlike PS5 and Xbox. Oh, that's ridiculous. PS5 and Xbox has games. What are you talking about? Does it have to be exclusive for you to count it? Like, get out of here. PC Master Race. Daxus says, Nintendo has kind of been using gimmick games as their MO since the Wii. That's true. That's true. And then here chimed in with, I don't think they're going to update the, the tax Switch anytime soon. I agree, which I find disappointing because, like, I don't know. I just... Innovate, improve, you know what I mean? All right, if I'm just going to chatter, why don't I give myself some busy work to do? I am sure there is a model that I can just mindlessly detail. I felt bad people that have joined the stream possibly for the first time. I swear I usually sculpt the whole time. This stream specifically is kind of unique and odd in that I am not doing that. <laughs> you know what? No worry. I will do what I came here to do, which is post-process these all the way. I don't know why I'm so pressed about showing art on my live stream. Like, it's a reasonable goal. But, um, if you want to see more art from me, I literally keep my live streams up. And the live stream from earlier today was fire, okay? It really was. <laughs> All right, let's get these going. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I always import my reference scene. I have a little model that kind of reference things off of to get sizing roughly correct, and then I measure it at the end. Saxa says, she does usually sculpt the whole time. She's ignored us for many minutes of time where she's super focused. Thank you, Saxa, I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone that's here like knows me. I but yeah. What was I? There we go. Gotta get my little human in here. There he is. This is all the way from the Town Sweat collection that I did, and he has been great as a nice little reference. Not a burn. <laughs> and yes, so what Xander is joking about is I pretty much remade, I don't know how to say her name, which is why I've been specifically avoiding it. I've just read it. I know who you're talking about. It's like the, not the main character, but the main villain from Resident Evil Village. Which Resident Evil is it? There's a lot of Resident Evils now. Anyway, and it does look like her, but if she was a mushroom. Speaking of, why not just put that on the screen? There we go. She looks fabulous. All right, back to post-processing. And then if anyone is here that is learning ZBrush or just has questions, like definitely ask. I'd like to help. All right, how, what is a reasonable size to make this? I usually just go based off of feel, what makes the most sense. It's a doll, but I want it to be visible still, so I don't wanna make it too small. Cause like at this size, it's like totally unpaintable. I mean, maybe not for everyone, but for me, absolutely, I could not paint that. There we go, that's a good size, it's still really small. It would be as large as the child that was playing with it, but that's besides the point. That's also why I offer no base versions. I'm like, if you don't like it, size it yourself. Zaxa says, her name is basically just Lady D on the internet, and that's all you really need to say. Oh, I appreciate that, Cole, because I, I definitely keep saying it. I'm just like, I know what you're talking about, and I am avoiding saying it on purpose. I never played um, Resident Evil games. Aware of them, just never really played them. 
I also don't like scary things very much. Like, I like spooky, I like gore. Um, I just... I am very easily spooked, y'all. Like, like, so easily spooked, it's annoying to live with myself sometimes. Like, if my boyfriend is out of the room and he comes back into the room, I almost inevitably jump. And it's obnoxious. He was just like, were you traumatized or something? And I'm like, no, I'm just like this. I don't know why. On the plus side, if anyone tried to sneak up on me, I'd probably overreact so much I'd scare the both of us. So, go me. Hmm. Just watch Markiplier. He he masters how to say her name. I haven't watched a whole lot of Markiplier stuff, but I could do that too. He seems very friendly, very happy. I actually don't have a lot of YouTubers that I follow regularly right now. I used to. That seems like inevitably some of them have like, just like, not mental health crisis, but they just get tired. You know what I mean? They kind of burn out. Um, I watched Glam and Gore stuff a lot for a while there. I think she's fantastic. Obviously, I love Jenny D. How could you not love Jenny? Um, she actually retweeted or no, she posted my manicure that um, she or a friend painted, and I like lost my mind. <laughs> Does your burb spook you then? No, actually, he does not. I guess I'm very biased. I'm just afraid of people. <laughs> also, he doesn't ever stop making noise, honestly. So, um, I guess I don't have that problem with him. I don't know if you guys can hear him at all, but he is, he's back there, dinging his bell, having a good time. enough to get another parakeet at some point. I mean, they live between, according to Google, like, 3 to 13 years. And I'm like, that really does not narrow it down or is helpful in any way. Thank you. But, um, everything I've read online, he's a really weird little dude. Like, he, he obviously has, like, fun parakeet mannerisms, but, like, he's pretty self-sufficient. He doesn't get lonely or sad, and he's just, just a weird little dude. Spooks easily like horses. Does that check out? It might check out. It checks out. I have a thoroughbred specifically, too. I don't know how much you guys know about horses, but, like, this, I mean, it's a stereotype. Don't get me wrong. Like, the more that I've worked with my horse, the more he is chilled out. He really isn't as spooky as he used to be at all. But, um, generally speaking, thoroughbreds, warm bloods, Arabians, they're all just a little more high strung. Generally speaking. Again, there are really exceptions to the rule. I wouldn't even say it's a rule either. I've met insane quarter horses before too. They're always paints. I don't know what's up with that. The spider I plan to do decently large. So I'm not sure what kind of base I'm going to put on that. I really should do some little spider egg decorations, but I'm not sure how extra I want to go with this. But it's funny you do mention spooks easily like horses and does that check out. And, uh, no, like, <laughs> there was one of my favorite memories of with my horse. We were walking down the side of the property. It's pretty much like a small trail. And there's an orchard right there. And a bunch of crows came out all at once. And it spooked both of us. But we are both used to being spooked. So it's like both of us are walking. And then simultaneously together, both spook. And we both sidestep. And then as if nothing happened, just keep walking. It's just like... When you're easily spooked by things, there comes a point where even you're, like, tired of your own shit. And you're just like, whatever. And you just keep walking. And it was fine. We're a good fit. <laughs> God, how giant should this giant spider be? I feel like this is a good size. I'm happy with this. I could also just tell what kind of base it's going to fit onto. That'd be more reasonable. Obviously not a 25mm base. Let's see how it looks on a 30 No, it's going to have to have like a gigantic base unless I make it smaller. I don't want it too much larger than a 30 millimeter base. Again, there is a no base version. So I guess if anyone really cares, they'll just pick what they want. But I would like for it to be kind of usable from the get go, you know? 
I guess that is still pretty giant. I don't know. I think giant spider. I think like... what? What's his name from Harry Potter? Avalog? That's coming to mind? Avalog? How do I not remember the spider's name? It scared me to death the first time that I watched it. I'm also very afraid of spiders. <laughs> and small holes. I really don't like small holes. They just really gross me out. I don't know what it is. I mean, this fits pretty nicely on a 30 millimeter base, and it's definitely massive for a spider. Would definitely lose my mind. Well, it should weigh at least twice as much as that man, probably more. That's a big spider. It's true. Emil says, if your bird would have a class, what would it be? And there, model idea, insert class parakeet aerocochra. Yes. Emil, I'm gonna have to hire you as, like, assistant. Oh, and Xander sent me concept art about the hermit crab in the skull. I love you guys. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Anyway, check this out. Look how cool. Hell yeah. Anyway. Whoop. And then Zaxus mentioned Aragog. Yes, thank you. And then Zaxus said, second size might only weigh one and a half times. Still big. That's true. I think I'm going to stick with a 30 millimeter base. I just, I just feel like this looks reasonable. I feel like whenever I... I only ever see like 25, 30, slightly bigger, or it's like 60. I never see the awkward in between sizes as much. Or at least that's just not what we played with as often. Alrighty. What was I doing? Ah, yes, making my parakeet into a character. How have I never thought about that before? That is fantastic. Oh goodness, what would he be? What would he be? Oh, he's just such a little- he's just- he's- he's mischievous. He's very mischievous and sometimes spiteful and a little cranky. I feel like a bard is a little too on the nose. Maybe something more like a rogue? Oh, I could see that. But I don't want him looking like a rooster that fights with knives. You know what I mean? Hmm. Tiki as... Can you guys hear him at all? I mean, he is just putting on a show back there. I used to have a little camera just for him. That is a large size spider, so 30 billion is good. Very good. And Natalie, hello. The skull and the hermit crab sounds like a Lewis Carroll. Carol. Carol? Carol? I've never said that out loud. I've just read it before. Anyway, it does sound like a poem by him. <laughs> Bard. Yeah, I just, I feel like... It doesn't have to be too on the nose. He's very friendly, too. He could be a little seducer. I could see it. We can hear him. Okay, if it's annoying, you just let me know. Because I can... I can just tilt the door closed a little bit. He is partying back there. <laughs> the sun's starting to set, and um, he's like a rooster. Sun's coming up, sun's going down. He's got a lot to say about it. Bird, bird, bird. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I do like the idea of him being a little barbarian, though. Barbarian Tiki. Ah, oh, that'd be fantastic. I'll have to think about the Nord for. I miss the burp cam, yeah. YouTube's complaining about something right now. If it sounds, my audio sounds weird, I apologize. I feel like after an hour or so, it starts to get mad. It's like, that's enough bandwidth from you. Because if it's just my face buffering, that's fine. You know, I think it's funny. One of the reasons why I didn't live stream for a while there is because I didn't want to, like, get ready, I guess. I don't know. I, I want to look cute on camera or presentable. So I learned how to do my hair and makeup this year, finally, which is great. And then here I am, live streaming after the barn. I smell like horse. I My hair is in a messy bun. And I'm just like, I guess it didn't matter, did it? I guess I didn't really, I didn't really mind. I just, I just thought I minded. It's fine. All right. Maybe a bard with a flute instead of a lute. I'd like that. I'm a little over the loot thing. Not a, not entirely, obviously. But I like seeing more odd instruments. Oh 
right. And maybe I can do some work getting the bird camp up and running again. We'll see. So my problem is if I have him close enough to have the camera connected and I'm talking, like right now he's like vibing. It's like a shoot. It's a shoot. Shoot. It's a cute sound. Um, it is not always a cute sound. And I, it, I have to like do damage control if he starts like losing his mind on camera because it is loud and I don't like it. And like, I don't care if you guys didn't mind it. It would drive me crazy. <laughs> so I'd have to work something out. I'd have to have like a temporary bird jail set up just in case. All right, I have a base that has cobwebs on it. So I'm looking for it to download from myself. Assuming I kept it. I guess I could just remake the base, but I, fun fact, I hate making bases. No good reason. I just don't make dedicated time to do it. So I don't do a great job with them. I reuse stuff a lot, which is fine. Yeah, I don't need the bird cam if it's an issue. I get you, you're just being polite, but like, it would be cool. Here we go. It doesn't have the tapered edges, but that's okay. Most of my bases do have a tapered edge. I could throw it in ZBrush and put that tapered edge on it, but I don't want to. So I'm not going to. Alright, transform to 30. The tapered edge really only helps if you are printing it flat on the build plate like a monster, like I do. That is exclusively high print. Making bases ain't fun, right? Ugh, I, Natalie, we should do a day where we just make a bunch of bases that we can reuse. It will be worth it and it'll be fun. We'll make it an art party. I'll figure out how to live stream it too. I feel like we're interesting, Natalie. I feel like people would like to listen to us talk. Actually, I know they would. But anyway. We'll do it at some point. And then we'll have bases to use. Emil says, oh, bases is the only reason why I'm still a member at Titan Forge. Oh, they gave a bunch of really cool bases, huh? You can make bases and I'll make hands. That would be great. That would be great. This is why it's important to have an art friend. All right, spider is based. So for the tombstone, I don't think I'm going to put this on a base because that doesn't make any sense. God, how big is this model? What the heck? The whole screen just went gray, which presumably it is at least that large then. It'd be really cool if I could just do this in ZBrush. But no. Alright, it would make sense to me that the tombstone would be roughly the size of a human. So, let's just put him in the grave, y'all. I definitely need to make it bigger. Like, the dirt mound doesn't have to necessarily match up, you know? I've had people ask me before where they're just like, how do you, like, make your sizing and all this kind of stuff and you choose what looks good? And I'm like, this is how. It's not, like, a super glamorous process. There's no, like, special method. I just stack things together and I'm like, looks right. I think that tombstone might be weirdly tall now though. So let me check that out. Why does it have to be negative 90? Yeah, tombstone is way too big and weird. I mean, it's, it's fine, but it's weird. We're gonna make it a little bit smaller. Like, there. Yeah, we gotta figure out how to stream together. I, excuse me, I've done it before. I, I just, I, for some reason, can remember nothing how we did it. Emil says, yeah, I really like to give a huge amount of size each month, but the surprise indeed is something that he's covered by a mini. I said that way too quickly, but it's in the chat if you guys want to read what he said. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, all in good time. I will improve on these other areas as well. I'm very happy that they are already doing it, but they probably have more than one person working there. I assume. That would be super impressive otherwise. 
face is one of those things that it feels like it's not that important, but I know that when I like spend more time on it, it's going to be so worth it and people are going to appreciate it. What I have now isn't like bad by any means. It's just kind of like, meh, you know, it's not as impressive as the model, which I mean, it's better than the other way around. How funny would it be if my models weren't nearly as cool as uh, the bases that I made? All right. I don't mind making the mimic slightly larger. There we go. Looking spooky. And these ones will not have multiple base versions because that does not make sense. Tombstone with hands. Because I do have this tombstone. It's pretty much the same, just without the um, hands and the eyeballs. There we go. Natalie says, thanks for streaming again, Mia. This is such beautiful Friday vibes. I'm going to head out, get some free Halloween crafting to do tonight with some friends. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Enjoy your evening. I'll be wrapping up here pretty soon, too, because I am almost out of work to do. But yeah, thank you guys for hanging out. Some of you guys for the second time. Uh, something really cool that YouTube now has is polls. There were, I used the three when I was making this, um... Mike and Queen, and it was just really, really fun to get like definitive feedback right away from you guys without having to like scroll through comments, you know? What am I trying to say? Numbers. It, it was nice to get a number, <laughs> number feedback. Oh, you know what? I'll need to download the original tree for this to see roughly what size to do. Maybe for next live stream, I'll find some spookier music. Not like super spooky, obviously, but something chill, kind of lo fi ish. Pretty much what I'm listening to now, except not, uh, but a royalty free version or whatever is on, um, what is it called? Epidemic Sound. There we go. Right now, I am looking through my own folders of what I have prepared to see if I have everything up. Oh, cool. I had folders made of everything and I'm like, did I already press process this and I had forgotten? No, no, we're good. We're good. Cool. It's going to be like annoyed that I'd somehow done the same amount of work twice and didn't even notice. We're good. There we go. Just appending the tree so that way I know how big to do the mimic. Larger. And then after this, uh, that'll pretty much wrap up the live stream. Looks good to me. There we go. Sweet. All right, that will wrap things up. Thank you guys so much for hanging out on this more impromptu live stream. <laughs> um, I'll be probably live streaming again next week. I probably won't do it over the weekend, but I live streamed twice today unannounced. So don't don't take my word for it because I don't know what I'm doing either. Oh, my dog also needs his own mini. He's a pug. He's like natural character material. He looks ridiculous. <laughs> All right, guys. Anyway, thanks again so much and uh, take care. Bye.